So what is Dalton's Law and what is the clinical significance of Dalton's Law when it comes to respiration? So Dalton's Law states that in a mixture of gases, the total pressure is equivalent to the sum total of the individual gases. Now what does that actually mean? Well, we can use a very simple, easily uh, relatable example such as that of us living in our atmosphere. So if you go down to the beach and you were to take a container and capture some of the air around you, you'd find that the pressure of that air, probably surprisingly, is a pressure of around about 760 millimetres of mercury. So like I said, this is called atmospheric pressure at sea level. Now you've probably heard of millimetres of mercury as a measurement of pressure before when we look at blood pressure. The systolic pressure at the strongest contraction of the heart is 120 millimetres of mercury within the arterial system. And if you look at the diastolic pressure when the heart relaxes, the pressure is around about 80 millimetres of mercury. So how can the atmosphere around us be greater than that, 760? Well, because we're born into this pressure, so we don't feel this atmospheric pressure around us. And it has to do with the column of air immediately above us. Obviously, all this gas on top of us is pushing their way down due to gravity and placing some sort of pressure upon us that we don't necessarily feel. And that pressure is 760 millimetres of mercury. Now, the atmosphere, even though it is 760 millimetres of mercury, is made up of a number of individual gases. These individual gases include nitrogen, include oxygen, include carbon dioxide, and some trace gases. What are these trace gases? Well, these trace gases could be argon, could be water vapor, could be a number of different gases. Now, if we were to take a look of the 760 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure around us, around about 78% of it is actually composed of nitrogen. Around about 21% of it is oxygen. Approximately 0.05% is carbon dioxide, and the rest is made up of the trace gases. So if we were to do the calculations to find out what the individual pressures are for each of these, well, you'd do 78% of 760 millimetres of mercury is around about 597 millimetres of mercury, and this is for nitrogen. If we look at oxygen, well, that's 21% of 760 and that equals around about 159 millimetres of mercury. And like I said, that's for oxygen. Carbon dioxide, 0.05% of 760 is approximately 0.3 millimetres of mercury. And like I said, that's for carbon dioxide. So Dalton's Law states that a mixture of gases the pressure of which is the sum total of all the individual gases, which means if we were to add these gases up, the 597 of nitrogen, the 159 of oxygen, and the 0.3 of carbon dioxide, it will approximately be equivalent to 760 millimetres of mercury. Now, why is this relevant clinically? Well, it's relevant clinically when it comes to looking at something called Henry's Law. Of course, there's a number of different laws that you need to remember clinically. Henry's law states that when you look at an individual gas, or even looking at a mixture of gases, that the partial pressure, so that's what these are called. These pressures here are the partial pressure of these gases within a total gas. So while the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, the partial pressure of nitrogen is 597. The partial pressure of oxygen is 159. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 0.3 millimetres of mercury. These are the partial pressures. And when it comes to Henry's law, it states that when it comes to these pressures of these gases dissolving into a liquid, it has to do with their individual partial pressures. And they will only dissolve into or down a concentration gradient. So what that means is, is if for example, oxygen being 159 millimetres of mercury in the atmosphere, if you were to have a container 
So this is now moving into Henry's law a little bit, but if you were to have a container with water and it was 159 millimeters of mercury outside the container, but only 40 millimeters of mercury in the container, this oxygen would diffuse or dissolve into this liquid down its concentration or down its pressure gradient. Even if, for example, even if in addition to this, the pressure outside for carbon dioxide is 0 0.3 and the pressure inside the liquid for carbon dioxide was 20. Does that mean that because it's lower of carbon dioxide outside and higher inside, its mixture together would balance it out? No, of course not. It means that the carbon dioxide is going to come out of that liquid. Okay, so it's talking about dissolvability has to do with the very specific partial pressure of that gas. It goes down its own pressure gradient. It doesn't care what the pressure gradient is of any other gas around it, even when it's within a mixture like this. So what is Dalton's law? Dalton's law states that when there's a mixture of inert gases, that its pressure is going to be an equivalent to the sum total of all the individual pressures. And if you know the percentage of those gases, you can easily calculate what's termed the partial pressure of those individual gases.